Greetings gentlemen and ladies, I'm the Crypto Game Snob, and in today's video, I am having some fun playing around with uh, some death decks, some sort of hybrid zombie death later game, Demogorgon, Helion Elite, Hippocras Monster, Trial of the Underworld, Apocalypse Now, just having some fun with some crazy death cards. Death is, death is really a lot of fun to play. Uh, so I have a couple of games here, and the first one starts out with Faustian Pact. Now, this is the first time I've ever played this card, and it does not do exactly what I thought it would do. And uh, it's quite a quite a funny game, actually. Draw nine cards, and at the end of your turn, obliterate your hand. Now, I guess I read this wrong, because it's clearly written, and it totally makes sense when you read it. Uh, the, uh, now, what I read in my head, what it said in my head, is obliterate your current hand, and then draw nine cards. I thought it obliterated cards in your hand currently, and then uh, obliterated, uh, uh, and then drew nine fresh cards. And I thought, wow, that's fucking amazing. <laughs> like, really? That's a, that's a card? That is not quite exactly what it does. And you'll see about that in the game. Anyway, for this uh, game, I'm running this deck here, uh, Blight Bomb, Sulfuric Rain. Uh, and like I say, kind of playing around with some different things just for fun. I like to experiment. I don't know how optimized this deck is yet. It's totally just fun and experimental. Uh, a couple of voracious fiends, cursed obeliskiskiskis, uh, Faustian pack, no longer. Take I took that one out. Uh, Fickle cambion, necroceptor, a couple of those, decaying rhino. So this is kind of an early game zombie death deck, right? But it's got some later game more akin to board wipe death options, right? So I'm kind of combining zombie death and board wipe death. That's kind of <clears throat> kind of where we're at. I got a couple of decaying rhinos because they're so big and strong. Uh, for four mana, five six. Um, yeah, that's that's a scary creature. Corpse explosion, just one of those in there, and that is basically because hey, you never know when a corpse explosion and blowing up your entire board might finish the game. Like I say, highly experimental, <clears throat> definitely a lot of fun. Couple, uh, just one Nether Swarm Lord to help buff up a board full of zombies, assuming that happens. Uh, Raise dead because you never know what creature you might want to bring back. Healing Elite, Demogorgon. Uh, Hippocrates monster, possibly. Uh, Arch of Amemnos, because if in case the Necroceptor and Cursed Obelisks weren't, weren't giving me enough zombies, well, that's what uh, that's what uh, Arc of Amemnos, Mos, Nemos, Minos is all about. Uh, and then we have Neferu, because Neferu's awesome. Neferu's a fantastic board clear uh, that you can play over and over again. Uh, yeah, Neferu's awesome. Uh, we have Reap, which is actually an awesome card. Destroy target creature and heal your god for four. Um, four is a lot of health, actually. It doesn't sound like all that much, but it's quite a lot of health. Especially if you're getting low on health. Four is very nice, and you get to take out your opponent's biggest threat, whatever that happens to be. Reap is nice. Apocalypse now, just because um, destroy all creatures and then destroy all uh, creatures again. Yeah, no explanation needed. Trial of the Underworld is in there. Uh, because this has potential to be so powerful. You can you summon a random five creature from either either void to your side of the board and then repeat for six, seven, and eight mana. Okay, so this basically can potentially load your board with a five drop, a six drop, a seven drop, and an eight drop. Uh, and this could also be used kind of uh, strategically. For example, that's why Helion Elite is in this deck. You don't see Helion Elite all that much in Mythic play. But hey, I'm, I'm playing around and having some fun here. Healing Elite is a super strong card. It's just that most mythic decks don't use it for some reason. It, it's just not often seen. That being said, I'm throwing it in there. It has a nice synergy with Trial of the Underworld. You throw down your Healing Elite first, your opponent manages to clear it, and Trial of the Underworld can bring that right back. Demogorgon, two of those, uh, same idea. Trial of the Underworld can bring those back. Killed Enforcer, same idea. Trial of the Underworld can bring those back. Neferu, Trial of the Underworld can bring her back. Uh, yeah, basically all those good things. Uh, Hippocrates Monster is the game ender, if it gets that far. Ward, and if your opponent doesn't deal with this or drop down frontline um, in your first turn, you're basically a one-shot game finisher. This is probably buffed up to 30 or 40 health and strength, maybe, by the time it's actually played. I'm debating between that and Polyhymnia. Um, like I say, totally experimental, just having some fun here. A single Pyramid Warden, just to help potentially establish an early game board with Cursed Obelisk and some zombies and that sort of thing. A couple of Guild Enforcers because it's just so helpful to have a powerful frontline at 5 mana. It really helps you get momentum back in the game if you don't have it. 
or, or it you know really helps you to uh, you know maintain your momentum if you do have it. Team of Gorgon, just because it's an overpowered, broken, fantastically awesome card, and I just recently added it to my deck. I, I, I haven't had Team of Gorgon before, so I'm playing around with some Team of Gorgon at this point. Helium Elite, yeah, Helium Elite, because that's the big bopper right there. The Helium Elite, ten, twelve, protected frontline. Yeah. Mm hmm Yeah. Anyway, okay, let's jump into some videos. Soul Burn, of course, because we want to be able to trigger Frenzy whenever we want to be able to trigger Frenzy. Uh, Demogorgon's nice. Not in my opening hand, though. Necroceptor, awesome. That's great in your opening hand. You can pip into that on mana 3, drop that down, start making unlimited zombies. The value out of ne Necroceptor is potentially absolutely absurd. 3 mana, unlimited zombies. Yeah. You guys know it. You guys know Necros Necroceptor. You know it's absurd. Anyway, I'm facing up against a, uh, a bit of an aggro, frenzied aggro, roar, war type deck. That's my opponent. Necroceptor down, zombie out. As good. Off to a good start, not too bad. A protected tavern brawler is, is nice, but I have the perfect answer in my hand with Blight Bomb. Now, I was thinking about dropping down that cursed obelisk, but I'm sort of thinking that protected tavern brawler is just such an easy, easy pickings for the Blight Bomb. That's what I'm going to do. That's what I'm going to do. Get another zombie, and that way be able to hopefully trigger a frenzy for the cursed obelisk on the next turn. That's my thinking. Axie Girl, obviously very good at countering my uh, my hopeful intention. Uh, protected Axie Girl, even better. Knock the Pillager, very nice twin strike leechy card. Uh, at this point, I'm sort of thinking whatever I drop down uh, might not have the best chance of surviving. He's got one, two, three, but you know what? Not a whole lot of options, and maybe I'll have just enough zombies to uh, to stay protected, depending on what he's got in his hand, right? Because his Viking Axie Girl will trade for one, his Knock the Pillager will trade for two more, and then potentially the uh, Cursed Obelisk will survive, or so I'm hoping. I do want to keep it, generating more and more zombies. Auric Rush ruins my day here, in a, in a big way. <laughs> in a big way. Uh, there goes the zombies. It also puts the Cursed Obelisk into perfect range for his Knock Fee Pillager. His Knock Fee Pillager gets a uh, hit on my face and takes out my Obelisk and even survives. Um, yeah, not great. <clears throat> now, I don't have a lot of good options in my hand, as you can plainly see. I have zero options. This is the point of the game where uh, I'm thinking to destroy my existing hand and draw nine new cards. That's how I read it, like I was telling you before. That's like I say, not exactly how this card works. And that is why this card is no longer in my deck. <clears throat> so anyway, I'm cool. I reloaded up my hand, I'm thinking. Voracious Fiend, that card would seem super OP, right? I got like a full hand full of, full of cards now, and I had to destroy my existing hand. Although it is kind of funny that my existing cards are, are still in my hand. Something's... Uh-oh. Uh-oh. And here I realized that I read that card wrong. As you can see, it destroys your entire hand after you play it. So there are probably some interesting things you could do with card draw, some interesting buffs you could get out of that. That is not entirely what my uh, deck is set up for. I, that, my deck is set up for entirely misreading what that card actually does. Um, so yeah, now I have destroyed half of my deck and, uh, and my opponent has actually some decent stuff on the board. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm in bad shape here. This is not looking good. I almost concede at this point thinking, well, that card didn't do what I was supposed to do, but you know what? There's a Helian Elite. Is there any outside remote possibility that I could possibly make it to eight mana? We are at, you know, almost six mana. That's only like a million turns away, right? <laughs> so um, yeah, I decided to keep going. Keep going and say, all right, you know what? Death can be ridiculous and death can be so ridiculous. Some of the things, some of the times death wins, it shouldn't, it just shouldn't, but sometimes it just pulls off these ridiculous things. 
Um, Neferu is actually looking really good at this point, because Neferu now clears his Knock V Pillager, knocks out his Raid Revelers Protected. It also takes my health down to below 15, uh, which makes, me, it makes it possible for me to play Neferu again when she dies. So I'm thinking, hmm. You know, Neferu just arrived in right, right at the, right at the nick of time. She's kind of exactly what I need. <clears throat> and now things have gone from looking uh, really, really bad to maybe on the outside of hopeful. I still only have like eight or nine cards, I think, in my entire deck, so that's not good. Um, but uh, yeah, as you can see, most of, as you saw earlier in the neck receptors and obelisks and all sorts of good things just got destroyed. I was able to play that fantastic 2-2 two, two Voracious Fiend, though. That was that was super helpful. Mm, sarcasm. <laughs> anyway. God Blitz. Setting up, I guess, to take out Neferu later. I'm not sure if that's the best strategy, but maybe he didn't have a whole lot of options. Nether Swarm Lord is kind of cool here because uh, Neferu... Is Neferu Nether? Or was she Anubin? She's Anubin. That's right. Um, still, anyway, lack of much to play, but Demogorgon comes to hand. And Demogorgon, as we discussed a moment ago, is a broken OP card from the old days of Genesis, and uh, Hector, also an OP broken card, just drops down with every possible thing. Blitz, Overkill, Twin Strike, uh, Leech, Protected, etc. So yeah, De uh, Hector definitely clears the board, but is actually the perfect thing to have on the board with the perfect amount of remaining health for Demogorgon to deal with, because Demogorgon will now put him to sleep and do 3 damage to a sleeping creature, and that happens to be Hector. So if your opponent is slayering, that tends to mean that they're lacking better options. So I'm thinking he's kind of sitting on a lot of bricks in his hand. Uh, Bronze Servant is fine. That gets rid of the Necroceptor. Not that I'm relying on Necroceptor at this point. Um, the Demogorgon is very nice. Get even some more healing out of that. Guild Enforcer, like I say, goes down. Helps you to just come back from any sort of deficit, although in this case I actually end up coming out a bit ahead. Um, yeah, and we, we're actually fast approaching that 8 mana drop. Like I say, this is starting from accidentally destroying half my entire deck in the early game, and this is kind of the ridiculous absurdity that uh, death can actually get up to. It's, it's kind of ridiculous. Vicious Rend is good though on Demogorgon, takes that out. <clears throat> And from here, that big old decaying rhino drops down with Frenzy, so it doesn't lose any health. A little bit of soul burn. And we're, we're all good here. Once again, Slayer kind of means that war has topped out, and death has somehow managed to survive to a point in the game where war and Blitzy War, Blitzy Egg Reward doesn't have a lot of good options. So, uh, yeah, I almost dropped down my uh, my underworld there, thinking I just want to summon up a bunch of creatures, but actually no. Then I think, you know, if there's any way he can take out a healing elite, I can just bring that right back next turn. So that's kind of the thinking here at this point. Like I say, uh, not a lot of mythic decks are really prepared to handle healing elite, especially sort of frenzy aggro war. If you get to eight mana, you're in a bad place, just kind of out of the gate because. You know, you're just not spec to deal with a 10, 12 protected creature, typically. There are some options, of course, but... Anyway, kind of a ridiculous uh, come-from-behind victory here. <clears throat> here I'm checking out what I can pull back from the dead just to make this more uh, unfair. <laughs> it looks like Demogorgon looks pretty good to me. Sure, why not? Anything would have worked. Guild Enforcer. A uh, couple, couple other good options there. Neferu, I think I saw. <laughs> yeah, a couple of good options. But yeah, death death can be so ridiculous and so fun to play and so frustrating to play against. Um, yeah, that's all that's all I can say. I thought this was kind of a funny game.
just because, you know, like I say, I destroyed half my deck at the start by accident, and death, 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 the way death is stacked still managed to actually pull out a win. That just seems, that just seems crazy. Kind of ridiculous, right? Okay, for this next game, my shadow play actually only records the last 20 minutes of gameplay, and this game went on for a damn age. Uh, so we're starting out here at 4 mana, because that's uh, for where I started recording it from. Blight Bomb is especially rude when you steal it from your opponent and uh, use it to take out one of your, uh, you know, one of your, your opponent's uh, favored creatures. Fickle Cambion can get so buff, so big and so strong with uh, Zombie Death just because every time your god gains health, Fickle Cambion also gains health, plus one health. And every time uh, your, what is it, every time your something something health something loses health, is it loses, I think god loses health. Yeah, then the Fickle Cambion gains plus one strength. So, yeah, kind of ridiculous with Zombie Death deck when it stacks up and blows up out of control. We are facing up against a, uh, a Deck Steel Deception deck, which can be very good, very powerful, very, uh, very interesting meta. The whole thing is all these Pyramid Wardens. Basically, what, they, what happens with the, not the Pyramid Wardens, sorry, the escape, Prisoner Escapees, Whenever they lose order, they summon up another prisoner escapee. So basically, uh, it kind of keeps copying itself every turn and a half. So it copies itself and copies itself and copies itself. And then the thing is that beyond that, you can also uh, use, I forget which card it is, but a card that removes order and then the order goes back on at the end of your turn. So you can drop that down and uh, automatically get another prisoner escapee summoned or two. I think it actually applies to everything on the board, I'm pretty sure. And so you can just start summoning up tons and tons of Prisoner Escapees. Prisoner Escapee is a very interesting card and part of the Deck Steel Deception deck. Stone Skin pr uh, Poison? Did I say Prisoner Poison? I'm not sure. That card is so powerful. It really is. Like, it takes your opponent's card out of commission and puts a big old burn on your, uh, you know, opponent's card. So, yeah, it just it just kills and it's not, not even expensive. I think, what was it? I think two or three mana, I forget. Anyway, like I say, that uh, Guild Enforcer, when you're when you're behind, which I currently am behind, but again, with de death decks, you never know when you're actually behind or actually ahead. Deck is so silly and, and fun that way. Um, but yeah, that Guild Enforcer comes down and uh, adds a lot of protective value, helps you to kind of get back on the board, kind of takes your opponent's board out a bit, hopefully if all goes kind of well. That Lanternbound Faye, though, is an awesome card. Every time that Lanternbound Fey loses order, it goes back into your opponent's hand. And every time it roars, I think it's four damage that it deals out. It's three or four damage, I forget. At this point, uh, I just don't have anything to play, so I drop down a Pyramid Warden, hoping for a little bit of uh, delay time <clears throat> as we make our way towards Apocalypse Now. is looking good. Demogorgon also looks good. I got some options in my hand. Like I say, we're playing kind of that zombie board wipe death hybrid weirdo super fun combo deck right now that's what we're up to it is a it is a really weird and fun deck to play because you really don't know how it's going to unfold a lot of decks you can play and uh it, it'll go one way or the other it'll either go well and you'll win really fast or it won't go well and you'll lose really fast and there's no coming from behind there's no sort of uh, swings and that sort of stuff like it, it a lot of decks you play are very black or white the uh, zombie uh, zombie death decks or zombie death board wipe hybrid or whatever I've got going on here, just death decks in general are interesting in that uh, you're never really out until you're out. Zombie, uh, just death decks in general are so interesting uh, in terms of come, behind, come from behinds and just big game swings and all sorts of interesting things that death decks can do. They're a lot of fun to play. They can be super slow and, and painfully long games, like if you're looking to blitz out a lot of games, the death is probably not the way to go. Maybe zombie death might be okay a little faster, but yeah. If you're looking to just have fun and have interesting games, death is so interesting. It really is. So there's that lanternbound Faye down again for another roar and creature clear. Really nice. And again, as soon as his creature loses order, that lanternbound Faye goes right back into his hand so he can throw it down again and again and again and keep clearing creatures out with it. Uh, now, of course, we have Apocalypse Now. 
which is just one of the most powerful, maybe maybe the most powerful card in the game, I don't know. It's certainly up there with the most powerful cards in the game. Destroy all creatures. If any of the creatures, ha creatures happen to be warded or anything like that, if they resist that first sweep, the destroy all creatures again picks them up with the second go around. Nothing survives. Apocalypse now. Oh yeah, oh yeah, well time for a sip of tea here for me. And now he's being especially cheeky, stealing my cursed obelisk. And uh, early on in the game he actually took it out really quickly. I hardly even got any use out of it. Uh, I think he stone skin poisoned it, or prisoned it, whichever it's called. And yeah, so I basically got no use out of it, and then he just plays it, plays it, st steals it and plays it. So that's, that's just so cheeky, so cheeky. Choku Rei, by the way, that's cool, man. That's cool. I know. I, I know. I know Reiki. I, I actually practice Reiki quite a bit. I, I get where you're coming from. Oh yeah. Trust me, that won't work. And yeah, like I say, that decaying rhino for four mana. It's just such a big body on the board. A perfect <laughs> target for a hunting trap. Uh, if I had managed to frenzy, I could have survived that. There's that Latin bound Fey. Yet again, so much uh, value, potential in that Latin, Lantern bound Fey. He just play it over and over and over. And guess what? At the end of his turn, uh, his shackled, shackled Acolyte is also going to lose order, and that Lantern bound Fey goes right back into his hand uh, again. Crazy. Meanwhile, those super cheeky zombies on the board. Uh, it's a good thing I didn't play Faustian Plat Pact in this game, because I this was a game one before the one we recently saw. Demogorgon does the trick, though. <clears throat> Trying to stall for a bit of time here as we make our way to Trial of the Underworld to get some more big creatures into the void so I can summon them back, basically. Bum, ba, ba, bum, ba, bum. Ah, a bit of Earl Grey tea. And there we go again. That lantern bound face. So much use. So much use out of that card. It's just crazy. And meanwhile, he also has that, that patient pickpocket again with Order 1. So the lantern, lantern bound face is going to go right back into his hand. Uh, now, those barrels are a problem. So if there happen to be a potentially four creatures at 5, 6, 7, and 8 mana in the voids. Uh, I could only pull back two of them at this point. I can sack my Demogorgon, of course, and pull down, drop down the Trial of the Underworld, but uh, I'm still not getting my best bang for my buck here in this case. So I'm sort of thinking at this point, it's probably better to just wait on the Trial of the Underworld, get some more big creatures into the void, uh, clear the board so that, that there is some, some space Neferu is a good option here because, well, she does, you know, she'll basically clear most of that. I'll be able to actually knock out those barrels as well, which will damage my god, which will put uh, uh, my health below 15, which will mean that if Neferu dies the next turn, I'll be able to play her again. And so that's kind of where I'm thinking with this. I do want to heal up a little bit, though, just because I am going to be taking a lot of damage, both from Neferu and from all of those explosive barrels, so... Just throw the Demogorgon into his uh, into his face for a bit of healing. Those barrels all go off. Each one does, I think it's three damage each. I'm pretty sure it's three damage. Bang. No, it's two damage. Bang, bang, bang. And then, of course, Neferu also does some damage, which actually puts me in a perfect place to bring Neferu back if she happens to uh, die the next turn. And now we have a nice clear board as well, and definitely at least uh, some decent creatures in the void to summon back with Trial of the Underworld which is such a fun card to play. When you can line up Trial of the Underworld and you can just pull back a huge board, that's such a fun card to play. It just it just is. <laughs> oh yeah. That Shackled Acolyte, though, is quite a powerful card for a 2-mana drop. You basically get a 4-4 creature out of it. 
That, you know, that's that's a lot of return value, and there's that lantern-bound Fey yet again. This time he's, I think he's hoping to burst down, burst down, uh, do some face damage, just kind of end the game as soon as possible. <clears throat> now this is a weird call. I'm not sure why he used Orpheo's distraction. I think maybe that was a misplay. I'm not 100% sure, but maybe he just wanted to clear the board for some zombies. I'm not sure. That That seems like a weird play to me. Anyway, just a nibble comes to hand at a very, very opportune time, luckily, because, uh, yep, there was a, there's a, you know, not a lot of health left. Now, I'm ready to get rid of that Lantern Bound Fey at this point, as you, as you guys have noticed, it's taken me out, taken, it's been roared, I think, like five times in this game, so it's time to drop that off the board. If it just dies and doesn't get pulled back in this, into his hand due to order, he, he, you know, he loses it, finally. So that's kind of my favoring favoring option uh and uh of course the the ra uh what was it called the veteran archer the ranger i forget it's good for taking out that zombie obelisk which is my zombie obelisk obelisk doesn't belong to him <laughs> anyway mm -mm. so things are starting to look a whole a lot better at this point we're coming back in health thanks to uh, just a nibble had a nice little nibble on neferu and um Trial of the Underworld still in hand. I'm looking mighty, mighty appealing, mighty tempting. <clears throat> My opponent, though, still with a lot of cards in hand. I think six or seven cards in hand, so potentially a lot of options there. Not too sure what, but potentially a lot of options. <clears throat> but this was a hey, Choker Ray, by the way, good game, brother. This was a, a fun, a long, and a thoughtful game. I, I enjoyed it. So uh, one of the funnest games I've had in a while. And uh, yeah, board, you know, death decks, are, they're so interesting. They really are. So I'm thinking he doesn't want Neferu to come back into my hand, so he just decides to spend a little bit of cheat power on my, uh, on my ranger. Mm -hmm. So, at this point, a good option is to basically take out his uh, uh, Jinx Blade Duelist. Neferu will come back into my hand, and that will actually allow me to play her again, one mana less, and, uh, and, and basically clear his board. Basically clear his board, because Neferu does 3 damage to everything on Roar. The only thing that will survive is the Warded... Uh, wa warded... I forget what that card's called, too. Mismic or something like that? I forget. Uh, Rune of Life, very nice. Get some healing on because I'm quite low at 7 health. Mm -mm. Just, you know, just get some healing. Never know. Never know what's going to happen. 7 health is kind of scary. Mm -mm. And another surprise delivery. This absolutely ruins my day, <laughs> just because I was planning to play Trial of the Underworld next. And I'm thinking, uh, dang it. I couldn't even get Neferu off the board if I want to, so at best case scenario, I'll get two creatures out of that. So, yeah, that's not my favorite. And those barrels account for... Uh, six points of damage in just two turns from now. So that's quite a bit of quite a bit of burst damage when they when they burst. I guess uh, yeah, maybe he just wanted one to explode a little sooner. Had lack of a better option. Just the nibble is so nice. Death has so much healing. I reckon it was kind of heartbreaking to see that heal at that point because this game has been rather tight and rather close so far. And then Reap, such an awesome card because not only does it destroy a creature, it also heals. So now we've gone down from 7 health up to 21 and suddenly health is looking like an advantage. Well, technically is an advantage. I'm thinking the Enraged Ally is going to be good when those barrels explode. You know, should we get that far? Should we get that far? Eh, yeah. Eyeing up the under underworld. I'm not sure how many creatures are on the board. I probably should have counted in the void. I probably should have counted. Um, because I'm thinking instead of four, I'll just get three. I'm thinking that'll still be nice. 
Interesting that he decided to hide his... Uh, I'm thinking, yeah, I'm not actually even sure. I'm not sure what the plan was there. Just to protect it, I guess? But then he doesn't protect his face, so I'm not exactly sure what the thinking was there. Kind of an interesting play. Anyway, time for Trial of the Underworld. Trial of the Underworld actually only brings back two creatures, but hey, they're, they're big scary creatures. You get a lot of bang for your buck with Trial of the Underworld. This was uh, kind of my first stack of this deck, and I restacked it a little bit later to have more 5, 6, 7, and 8 creatures to potentially bring, bring back with Trial of the Underworld. Um, because I actually did mess up Neferu here, and now she's not going to be triggered for her afterlife. She was given soulless with the drop of Trial of the Underworld, uh, which is not the end of the world, because we're quite nicely ahead at this point. Rapture Dance, yes, that does a little damage, but it's kind of a desperate maneuver too, because it doesn't actually clear anything off the board. It does, however, put everything into range of the Guild Enforcer, and I'm guessing that was maybe his... Actually, I, I missed what was played there. I missed what was played. I'm thinking maybe that was his plan, and why he protected his Guild Enforcer, because he first wanted to Rapture Dance and bring everything into range so that Guild Enforcer would take it out. I'm thinking, in which case, that was a clever play. Good play. Blight Bomb, of course, very powerful. Uh, just doesn't care if you have armor. Doesn't care about a lot of things. Just cares if you have three health or less. And that Arc of Amemmos. So powerful. You drop it down, a whole bunch of zombies. Every turn, the ability is to summon more zombies. And uh, it also summons zombies when, you, when creatures die. It's, it's a crazy card. It really is. And it's backline with 3-7. Rapture Dance works, though. Rapture Dance absolutely decimates my board. Everything except one health out of that arc of a Memmos, which immediately summons some zombies back. And I actually forgot that it did that. I, I forgot that it actually summoned zombies back. I was like, well, what's going on here? There we go. Goodbye to Ark of Amemmos. Yeah, did a decent job, I guess, of creating a super powerful Rapture Dance. Yeah, that's what happened. Mm -hmm. A lot of back and forth in this game. So he's done some healing now. Nether Swarm Lord is, of course, good. And also uh, especially good when combined with Curse Obelisk and uh, Frenzy from those zombies. Um, yeah, so we're going to get a bunch more zombies now. Everything's going to get buffed up even more. That Nether Swarm Lord is definitely one of the game enders. And um, at this point, well, things are looking fantastic. I mean, I guess he could whip out another Rapture Dance. That would do a lot of damage. Ba -bum, ba -ba -bum -bum -bow. I do ba ba do ba di. All right. Like I say, I think this game was uh, about 25 minutes, and it was uh, it was an interesting one. A lot of back and forth. Uh, good game, Chokure. Well done. Yeah, I think he didn't know what Faustian Pack did either. <laughs> so it's like I think he played it there, and got that big old card draw, which uh, we saw in the earlier game. Well, basically just destroys your hand immediately thereafter. So, um, yeah. Yeah, not a good card. Definitely took that out of my deck. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Oh, the slow final move here. <laughs> I think he's just searching for any possible option. But, uh, yeah, none exist. That is it. Ding, ding, ding. Let's make them suffer. 
And you know what? We have to do this. We have to do a bit of a coup de grace. That's what we have to do. Corpse explosion on the board. Kaboom. Good game. A lot of fun. See you guys in the next video.